Hello, hello, and welcome back to State of Charge. We're gonna do a zero to 100% Tesla Model S Plaid supercharger recording right now. I just finished taking this guy out on the New Jersey Turnpike for a 70 mile an hour highway range test. I drove it from 100% charge down to zero, and it finished up with exactly 300 miles driven. Not bad for a car with 1,020 horsepower, can accelerate to 60 in under two seconds, and do a quarter mile in like 9.2 seconds. Nuts! And still be that efficient to be able to go 300 miles at 70 miles an hour. Now I will note that this has the 21 inch arachnid tire and wheel combo. So it's less efficient than the uh, base 19 inch wheels. That vehicle would have gone significantly further. It's rated by the EPA at something like 45 or 50 more miles of EPA range rating. So I would have done even better if I had that, but this was the only one that was available today for me to do the range test on with the 21 inch wheels. So that's what I grabbed. There's not a lot of these available right now here in New Jersey. I actually have to rent them because unlike all of the other manufacturers, Tesla doesn't give journalists loans. Any other company, I could just call them up and say, hey, I need a Porsche Taycan or I need an Audi e-tron and I'd get one in a week or so to do uh, video reviews of. But with Tesla, they work a little different than anyone else. They don't give you anything. So I had to rent this guy on Toro and it wasn't cheap. <laughs> Any event, we're gonna plug in now. I'm gonna record the entire session from 0% up to 100%. We'll make some graphs. We'll analyze the charging curve. We'll see how long it holds the 250 kilowatt max charge rate. Hopefully it'll, it'll take that in. This is a V3 supercharger and it's like empty. There's one other car way down at the end, and this is a 16 stall station. It's cool out with a nice breeze, so there shouldn't be any overheating issues with the cable or anything like that. So we should get the maximum rate this thing can accept. So I'm gonna plug in now, we're gonna record it. And like I said, we'll analyze the heck out of it, and maybe compare it to the 250 kilowatt charging session I did on my personal Model 3. And then we'll offer our final thoughts at the end. But don't forget, Please click that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. As you can tell, I'm right next to Newark Airport and the jets are like overhead. I hope that wasn't too loud. I hope the mic filtered it out. So stay tuned. Here comes the supercharging session recording. So this thing's ripping along at 250 kilowatts. It's doing that right up to about the 33% state of charge point. And that's when it's gonna start tapering down. You probably can hear the fans just humming away in here, trying to keep everything cool. But uh, the car is charging great. It, when I first plugged in, it only uh, pulled about 147 kilowatts. It did that for a couple of minutes and then it quickly shot up to the 250 and it's been holding it ever since. Model S charges, fantastic, especially the new one now with the new charging curve. It can take up to 250 kilowatts like the Tesla Model 3 and the Model Y have been able to for a while. It was kind of a shame that people were buying the top of the line Tesla, the Model S, and it charged slower than the less expensive one, but Tesla corrected that now. And now the Model S and Model X can accept 250 kilowatts, which is what these V3 superchargers can deliver. As soon as I plug in, it immediately jumps up to 147 kilowatts. That's a good start. In two and a half minutes, at 5% state of charge, the Model S is pulling the 250 kilowatt maximum draw it can take and jamming those electrons into the pack. In only seven and a half minutes, we're at 25% state of charge. And in 14 and a half minutes, we're at 50% state of charge. And that's a great start for the Model S Plaid. So I'm going to stop the video at this point just to go over what took place from zero to 50% state of charge, which we did in 14 and a half minutes. That's fantastic. But from 5% state of charge to 33% state of charge, the vehicle held its maximum charge rate of 250 kilowatts and it did that in seven minutes. So it added 28% of the battery in seven minutes or 4% a minute. Uh, and for a car with a big 100 kilowatt hour battery, that's basically four kilowatt hour every minute. 
fantastic, but you only get it for that window. If you plug in at a higher state of charge, you're not going to be able to pull that much kilowatts. You're not going to charge that quickly. So really, uh, if, if you're really like in a race, what you want to do is optimize that 250 kilowatt charge rate between 5% and 33% as much as possible. That's not always how people road trip. Most people aren't going to plug in at 0% state of charge, really almost never in real life circumstance. So a lot of people talk about um, uh, 10 to 80%, but let's talk about 10 to 50% because we've only charged to 50% at this point. That happens in 11 minutes. So if you're at a V3 supercharger with a Model S Plaid and you plug in at 10%, in 11 minutes you're at 50%. And quite often, that's all you need to get to your destination. I just did my 70 mile an hour highway range test and we did 300 miles. So when you're at 50% state of charge, you should be able to get around 150 miles of range depending on driving conditions, the temperature, how fast you go. But if you're in similar conditions to what I experienced, you figure you're good for about 150 miles. That might be all it takes to get you, you to your destination. So if you've driven far, you've driven the car down to 10% state of charge, you plug into a V3 supercharger, you're up to 50% in 11 minutes. I and mean, that's barely enough time to walk to the convenience store or the coffee shop, whatever's in the area where you're charging, use the restroom, grab a cup of coffee or something, and then walk back out to your car and you're at 50%. That's fantastic. All right, let's resume the video now and see what we do from here on out. All right, so at 50% state of charge, we're down to 150 kilowatt draw and the charge rate is in a steady decline. We reach 60% in 19 minutes and we're pulling 118 kilowatt. We then hit 70% in 24 minutes and we're pulling 95 kilowatt. We drop below the 100 kilowatt charge point. And then we're finally at 80% in 31 and a half minutes. We're pulling 70 kilowatts and then I had a problem. This happened. So I am so frustrated right now. The car shut off at 80%. It was pulling like 70 kilowatts at the time and it just shut off. It's set to charge to 100%, so I don't know why it did that. So I quickly unplugged, made sure it was set to 100%, which it was, and plugged it back in. So I'm gonna have to splice together these two pieces of the charging session. Not ideal, but I think we're still gonna get a perfect picture of what the charging session was and how long it took the kilowatt draw for the whole time. I noticed when I plugged it back in, it started charging at the same power that it was when it shut off. So it's not like it ramped up and we cheated by unplugging and plugging back in. I'm gonna have to really look at this when I get the two pieces together, but I'm gonna splice them together and I think we're gonna be like 100% on to what it would have been if it was to continue charging for the whole session. That sucks, but it is what it is and these things happen sometimes. Uh, but luckily I was able to plug it right back in and we'll get the full charging session recorded after all. All right, so we're plugged back in now, and you might have noticed the kilowatt draw spiked up to 76 kilowatt, but only for about 10 or 15 seconds. Then it dropped down to the 70 kilowatt we were at when the vehicle shut off. It reaches 90% state of charge at the 40 minute point, and we're pulling 51 kilowatt at that point. You'll notice we've added 12 kilowatt hour at this point. When the vehicle stopped charging, we had added 77 kilowatt hour at the 80% state of charge point. We reached 95% state of charge in slightly under 47 minutes. I mean, at this point, any reasonable person would unplug, but we're here to do zero to 100%. Not that that's real world, but it's what we need to do so people can get a complete picture of the charging curve. We're up to 99% in 56 minutes. The only question remaining is, will we hit 100% in under one hour? And no, just barely over one hour to hit 100%. However, the car's still charging. You can see there, we're still pulling seven kilowatt. That's because not all of the cells are 100% charged. Some of them might be like 99% charged and the car is slowly balancing out all of the cells to get them all the exact state of charge. And that takes a while. I actually left it this way for 13 minutes. It stayed at 100% and the car continued to charge at a very low rate as it slowly balanced all the cells. All right, so we hit 100% state of charge a little over 
60 minutes. It was just about 60 minutes and about 45 or 50 seconds. But then the car continued to charge at 100% um, for another 13 minutes until I unplugged because I just didn't feel like hanging out there forever while those final cells just balanced out. So really I unplugged at an hour and 13 minutes, but the car said it was at 100% state of charge at about 61 minutes, about an hour and one minute. So you can call it at whatever you'd like, an hour and 13 minutes, an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and one minute, really doesn't matter because the thing is, people aren't going to be charging zero to 100%. We do these supercharging and DC fast charging recordings from zero to 100% to give our viewers the complete picture of the entire charging curve. Then you can pull out of it what you want. Some people message me and say, oh Tom, just do, please just do 10 to 80%. And I have some people say, you know, I'm only really interested in five to like 75% or 20 to 90%. We do this complete charging graph not because we think that's what people are gonna do when they're driving their car on a road trip. Nobody's gonna drive it down to zero and then charge it up to 100%. But we give you that complete picture so you can cherry pick the data out of it that you want. I've had a few of my followers message me and actually complain saying that by doing these complete charging videos, you're doing a disservice to the EV community because you're saying, look, the Tesla Model S Plaid takes over an hour to charge and it really you know, doesn't because people aren't gonna be charging it that way. And they make a point. So I wanna make sure that people understand this isn't representative of what people are going to experience if they get a Tesla Model S when they're charging at superchargers. You only really need to stay there 15, 20 minutes you'll get a couple hundred miles of range and you'll be on your way. It depends on what state of charge you plug in. Obviously the lower state of charge that you plug in, the faster that you're gonna charge. And one more thing I wanna point out uh, is that you may have noticed when we did the zero to 80% session before the vehicle shut off, we had taken in 77 kilowatt hour. And then from 80% to 100%, we took in 20 more kilowatt hour. So, we took a 97 kilowatt hour in this entire charging session, which makes sense because the Model S Plaid has a 100 kilowatt hour battery. Now, not all of that energy ended up in the battery pack. There were some losses. We don't know exactly how much, but I'm figuring about four, maybe five kilowatt hour were lost. So we probably only pumped somewhere around 92, 93 kilowatt hour into the battery pack. But that just goes to show you, we were pretty empty. I mean, it might have had a couple one or two kilowatt hour in that in the low end buffer reserve if i would have kept driving i only drove about two miles past the point where the car hit zero percent state of charge i'm sure i could have gone a few more miles but at that point the range test was over i called it at 300 miles on the nose and that's where we ended up when we pulled up to the tesla supercharger but just goes to show you we did fill the battery up with 97 kilowatt hours what the the, the supercharger dispensed and we probably put 92, 93 in the battery pack. I have a couple of graphs now. Let's take a look at them and let's do a little more analyzing before we do the wrap up. So let's first take a look at the power graph. You could see the X axis is the state of charge and the Y axis is the charging power in kilowatts. As soon as we plug in, bang, we're up to 147 kilowatts. That's great. And about two minutes later, we're pulling the maximum 250 kilowatts and it happens at the 5% state of charge point. And it rips along at 250 kilowatts all the way up to 33% state of charge. That's fantastic. My Model 3 only holds the 250 kilowatt for about 9% of the state of charge. Something like, I think it was 8% to 17% is all it pulls the 250 kilowatt before it starts ramping down. The Model S Plaid has a bigger battery. It should hold it longer, but it holds it a lot longer from 5% to 33%. So that's really good. Then it starts this long sloping curve where it continues to drop at a pretty steady rate. And you notice that 40% state of charge point, that's where we drop below 200 kilowatt draw and that happens at 11 minutes into the charging session at 50 percent state of charge we're charging at 151 kilowatts and as soon as you drop below 50 percent it goes below 150 kilowatts i wish 
the Model S held uh, 150 kilowatts for a little bit longer. That's kind of my only nitpick. 50% is okay, but it, it should be able to hold that for a longer period of time. We're going to talk about that a little later. Uh, and uh, at 60%, it's at 120 kilowatt. At 67% is where it drops below 100 kilowatt draw. At 75%, we're down to 81 kilowatt. And at 80%, when the vehicle shut off, we were pulling 70 kilowatt. Now, when I talked about I'd like to hold the charge rate higher a little bit longer, you could see here how this graph kind of slopes downward. I wish it would be a little more linear. If, if Tesla were able to do that, it would hold a higher charge rate for a little bit longer, and you might be able to shave five or six minutes off of your charging time to 80%. Now that happens now at the 31 minute mark, you should be able to get that down to around 27 minutes, I think, if they were to have this part of the charging curve a little bit more aggressive and charging at a slightly higher rate. The last thing I'd like to point out on this graph is you see this little bump up here with the charging power actually increased for a moment, right around 80%. That's the point when the car shut off charging. We were pulling 70 kilowatts. When I plugged it back in for less than a minute, like 30, 40 seconds, it jumped up to 76 kilowatt, but then it quickly corrected. So I really don't think that this changed the uh, charging time at all. I think we're less than a minute within being the same as if it just continued charging all the way to 100%. All right, so now let's take a look at the time to charge graph. Now, I know a lot of EV aficionados and data geeks like me love to look at charging power and how many kilowatts the car is pulling. But honestly, for mainstream EV adopters, they don't really care about that stuff. They just want to know how long will it take me to charge? And that's why we plot out this graph. You can pick any point state of charge that you want to another point of state of charge and you can look at this graph and you'll have a good idea of about how long you'll have to stop at a supercharger. If you plug in at 25%, you want to know how long it takes you to get to 75%, you can use this graph to tell you that and it should be fairly consistent if you plug into a V3 250 kilowatt supercharger. If you plug into the V2 superchargers, they only pull 150 kilowatts so the graph is going to be different. I hope to be able to do a charging session with a plaid on a 150 kilowatt supercharger at some point in the future, just so we can do a comparison. But this is what we have for now. So let's take a look at the beginning of the charging session. That's where you have the most aggressive ramp up here. I mean, look at how quickly the state of charge rises in such a short period of time. After only seven and a half minutes, we're at 25% state of charge. That's really good for any electric vehicle. And it only takes 14 and a half minutes to get 50% state of charge. Now I just completed my 300 mile range test at 70 miles an hour. So in 14 and a half minutes, you could get 150 miles of range replenished if you plug in at 0%. Again, as I mentioned, not too many people are gonna do that, but it can replenish 150 miles in under 15 minutes, which is great. Another thing I want to point out, I always talk about how long does it take to replenish 100 miles of driving range and how long does it take to replenish 200 miles of driving range. Now, if you plug in at 0%, as I did, you replenish 100 miles of range when the battery's at 33% state of charge. And that happens here in nine and a half minutes. So you add 100 miles of range back in less than 10 minutes, you replenish 200 miles of range at the 66 state of charge percent point. That happens in 22 minutes flat. Again, really aggressive. Now after that, that's when the charging curve really starts to taper off and the charging rate slows down. But let's take a look at another couple points there. You hit 75% state of charge in 27 and a half minutes and the 80% state of charge point comes in 31 and a half minutes. Again, when you can go from zero to 80% in a, about a half an hour, that's a pretty good charging curve. And it, like I said earlier, 
people aren't going to plug in at 0%. A lot of people are going to plug in at 10% and 10 to 30% is going to happen, obviously, that much quicker. So you really aren't going to have to hang out at a supercharger much longer than 20, 25 minutes, unless you're going on a super long road trip and there aren't superchargers along the route. You need to squeeze out every mile you can. But most people, we recommend unplug at 80% because as you can see here on the graph, the charging rate really slows down. It, it almost becomes horizontal at this point rather than this sharp vertical line charging up. And then you'll notice at the end here, we hit 100% state of charge at the 61 minute point. But however, we remain plugged in for another 12 or 13 minutes. And that's why the chart is flat up here from 61 to 70 minutes. So that's it for our Tesla Model S Plaid supercharging video. Zero to 25% in seven and a half minutes. You get to 50% in under 15 minutes. And from zero to 80%, about a half an hour. Took an hour pretty much on the nose to go from zero to 100%. But as we said, nobody's really going to do that. You want to look at that sweet spot. And the sweet spot really is from a super low state of charge up to 50%. I mean, you're talking about 10 minutes, 12 minutes. If you plugged in at 5% to get to 50%, percent that's fantastic and for a long road trip you're going to add about 150 miles of range in 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 10 to 15 minutes that's really what you're looking for you, you're never really trying to charge to 100 percent i mean with gas cars you always fill up to 100 percent but that's just not how it works with electric vehicles you don't typically charge past 80 percent when you're on a long road trip and you're supercharging because it's a waste of time you ch you're charged so much quicker from lower states of charge you'd be better off stopping twice at two superchargers along the way and then just charging from like 10 to 50 percent and then 10 to 50 percent again you get to your destination quicker than if you just tried to charge all the way to 80 or 85 percent so as long as the superchargers are on your route, you don't have to really get off the highway that much. You're much better off just plugging in for a short period of time, moving on to the next one. My good friend Kyle Connor knows all about that. He does cannonball runs. He drives cross country. And he'll tell you, if you're in a rush, don't charge beyond 50 or 60% when you're charging with superchargers or DC fast chargers. Now that's provided there are charging stations along your route. You know, in some stretches of the country, there aren't a lot of places to charge, so you might have to hang out and charge a little longer. My graph should help you to learn exactly how far you're going to go and how long it's going to take you to charge. I have a lot of our followers print out the graphs and they put them in their glove compartment because it lets them know exactly how long it's going to take them to charge. So that's not a bad idea if you think you might need something like that in the future, just take a screenshot, print it out, throw it in your glove box. Well, that's it for the supercharger video. Thanks for watching. If you have questions about this, please leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget, please click that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. And thanks for watching.